first guest is a brilliant actor who you know as the bad guy in the award-winning series Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Give it up for Giancarlo Esposito. Thank you so much for being here. It is my pleasure to be here. Y'all are having a lot of fun and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you. I want to come on your show every day. You can come anytime oh you want. Oh my goodness, what beautiful energy. Isn't it amazing, engineer? We call this the happy place. It is. <laughs> it is the happy place. <laughs> you know, you have to act as if, if you don't feel it when you wake up and you act as if, life changes and everything comes to you. Yes. Truly, it's the mindset, truly, right? Truly, truly, truly. Your breakout role was in the movie School Days? It sure was. Yeah, Spike came to see me in a play called Zoo Man in the Sun uh -huh. in New York at the Negro Ensemble Company and came backstage to talk to me about doing his first film. And at that time, um, you know, it was, a, it was a musical peppered with a lot of music, and he culled it down to really make it a story about um, light skin and dark skin blacks on a college mm. campus in Atlanta. And it was important to him uh, to show how we interacted as, as human beings. Um, and we had a lot of wonderful folks in that cast. Yes. I'm sure you know. Yes, <laughs> of course we know. And Tisha Campbell was a part of that cast, right? She sure was. You taught her how to drive. Oh my goodness, how do you know that? I mean, this is what we do here at and the you Jennifer Luxie Show. <laughs> oh my goodness, Tisha came to me and said, I had a little Honda Civic that was orange, a little tiny little car. And Tisha said, I have to drive. I said, what are you talking about? Well, I have to drive. I said, Tisha, you know how to drive? She said, I know how to drive, but I can't drive a stick shift. And, and I said, what did you tell Spike? That I could drive. Oh. <laughs> I, you don't lie to Spike. No. <laughs> so I took her out in this little Honda Civic. And you know, if, you, if, you're, if you've never driven a standard vehicle, it's all about getting the clutch out and the, 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 the car into first gear. And if you don't get it out at the right point, you're going like this and back and forth. And so we did that a few times until she got it in gear and then it was smooth and I said, stop the car. She said, why can't I keep going? I said, because that is the most important thing. First first gear, and then everything else will run smoothly after that. So we had a ball on not only on that movie, but in that particular experience. And, and you acted with Eddie Murphy in Trading Places, which was one of my favorite movies. We love oh, Eddie. Oh, my, we, and Eddie. What do you remember about that experience? That's you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there I am. Yeah, tell oh. us how you cut the dude. I was in the background trying to upstage this master comedian and marvelous actor uh, who is, uh, is always so generous. Yes. Uh, it's been so many years since this movie. Um, I remember that's where I learned not to be jealous. Th uh, you know, <laughs> being behind this guy, I said, wait a minute. Don't try to do what he's doing. He's got his thing. Do what you do. Right. Observe and play the space that you have. And I tell you, I learned a lot on this film from him. He is the, the master improviser. Yes. The most wonderful human being who really goes with his gut and when he feels something, he waits for the camera to roll and he does it. Mm. And uh, I really admired that and learned so much from Eddie on that film. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got to do my first one with Eddie. Did you just say play, play? I love that. You said play the space. Play the space. Can you elaborate on that? Play the space you have. Well, so we as human beings sometimes get taken over by other people's emotions. Mm. So to be in your own space and to be in that space is to check in with yourself and know where you're at at any given moment so you're not thrown off by that by any suggestion. We live in a time where suggestion is always coming to us. When we make a choice of what our day will be, we make a choice that this is right here, the happy space. That's claiming it. Yes. That's claiming your joy. That's claiming your happiness. I need to talk to you about the big red boots. You got a whole to a pair recently, huh? How did that happen? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got a call from my youngest daughter, who's a filmmaker and photographer, oh. Ruby Esposito. And she says, Papa. I said, what do you want? <laughs> Papa, <laughs> would you be my model in a photo shoot? And I thought, OK, I'm home for 24 hours. Um, and I said, sure. I'll do it for you. Aww. So she's been working on a film in Santa Fe and I'm in Albuquerque. She comes down and she carries in this big, huge box. And I say, what's that? She said, oh, you're not gonna believe it. <laughs> they looked me up, they, they knew I liked white sneakers and I asked them, would they send me the red boots? I said, what are the red boots? You, she said, you're not hip to the red boots. <laughs> so, so she opens this box and they're these huge red boots that are like Astro Boy's boots. Yeah. And I said, well, what are we gonna do with those? She said, you're gonna put them on. 
They're your size. And I said, wow, <laughs> I'll do it. And as long as you'll photograph me, he said, that's the whole point, Papa. <laughs> and so that is this red boot fun time that I had with her um, until... Uh-oh, until... Until it came that time to try to get them off. You couldn't get them off? She looked at me and said, oh, Papa, that's not unusual. Wait. <laughs> it's not unusual. People look, have you had, look so concerned. People have... I, you see my face? You see his face? I'm like, wait a minute now. I had to fly the next morning. <laughs> and, she, and she said, um, it, people have been known to have to cut them off. I said, I'm not cutting these boots yeah, off. Yeah, and they expensive. I said, what's the price tag? She said, they're over a grand. I said, I'm not cutting these boots off. You're not <laughs> cutting them off. Now, I got to say, she nailed that picture. She you is. Y'all nailed that together. That is the best photo I've ever seen with them on. Now, for those who don't know who you play in Mandalorian, can you tell them who you play? You have something I want. Oof. I play Moff Gideon, yes. who is a warden of this particular section uh, of the galaxy. Uh -huh. The galaxy has completely uh, collapsed, and there are different wardens, Moffs, who have been assigned to take over, and Moff Gideon would like to have a little more of the pie than has been assigned to him. And he is going to get it. He is in search of Baby Yoda, Grogu. <laughs> that powerful little baby that has something that he wants. He doesn't quite know what it is yet, but he is bound to find out. You are such a storyteller. <laughs> Wasn't you just engulfed in it? Oh, my God. I, I got to tell you, I love this character. I, I can tell. I love this character. You know, I got a call from John Favreau who said, I have good news, I have bad news. What's, what's the bad news? The bad news is we're putting all the money into the technology of it. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, that's what they all say. Okay, what else, John? What's the good news? He said, the good news is I wrote a role for you. And there have been other moths through the history of Star Wars. Uh, but this particular show returns us to the very, the theme that is... It's powerful because it deals with our history, not only, and our, the power of mythology. Mm. The power of the story of mythology is to help us grow as heroines mm -hmm. and as heroes. Mm. And whether you are lying somewhere in the middle of that, which we have the anti-hero, mm -hmm. who I believe is a hero, mm. He's just fallen from grace because no one would follow him or listen to what he wanted to try to teach them. So he then goes to his ego and to his power and tries to do the grab, right? But that's still someone who may have had good intention. In life, intention is everything. If your intentions are where they should be, everything good will come to you if you choose the light. If you choose the dark, mm -hmm. then you have, you have to take everything that comes with choosing that darkness. Moff Gideon... Um, is, um, he's a little bit dark. You better tell it. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.